Welcome everyone. God bless you. It's another glorious Resurrectional Sunday. Um, it has been uh, wonderful. Um, God willing, it's wonderful for all of you as you went to churches or uh, followed on the internet the Divine Liturgy today. Um, we continue our um, sessions on Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And as, uh, um, as I mentioned uh, several times, those sessions on Sunday afternoon uh, bear the goal of uh, encouragement, of getting together, of fellowship, um, more than anything else. But we also discuss the Gospel reading uh, for that Sunday, maybe we choose one point to accentuate uh, in order to, to uh, keep the uh, session biblical. Uh, but the main goal is that we stay in touch with each other and we spread the word. Uh, we have fellowship live and afterwards, after we post the recording of this uh, uh, session on, uh, on the internet. So, the Gospel reading for today uh, is from uh, St. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 23 through 35. The Lord spoke this parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the reckoning, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold with his wife, his children, and all that he had, and payment be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and besought him, have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay his debt. When his fellow servants saw what, he, what had taken place, they were greatly depressed or distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place, then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you besought me. And should you not, and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. So the topic today is not just forgiveness, but also repentance. In another gospel reading, the disciples asked Jesus, how many times do we forgive? He said, seven times 70, which is how many times? 490. So we count every day for each person. One, two, three. Once we hit 490, we stop forgiving. Is that the premise? Is that the way uh, Jesus meant it? Absolutely not. The idea is to forgive. And forgiveness cannot really reach the person who needs the forgiveness unless that person repents. Unless that person repents, forgiveness does not reach him. 
he does not feel the effects of the forgiveness unless he repents. You see, we have to be very careful also with forgiveness. If we forgive someone over the same sin, over and over and over and over, we become an accomplice with their sin. We have to make the point that we're, we are forgiving so that they don't repeat it. If they keep repeating it, then we're enabling them in a bad way to keep um, uh, sinning. You see, in Matthew chapter 10, chapter six, uh, 10, verse 16, he says we have to be wise as serpents. Chapter 10, verse 16. We have to be wise as servants, as serpents. So forgiveness has to be done in a way to help the person repent and not repeat the sin. Forgiveness cannot be in a way to help the person continue to sin. You see, orthodoxy is not a literal faith. We have to apply the verses in the context of the Bible, in the context of the tradition, in order to help the person not to sin. See, this person owed his master what's equivalent to the national debt today. And because he asked him for forgiveness so that he has time to um, collect the money, he forgave him. You see, the goal of his master is not to receive the money because he knew his servant can in no way accumulate this money to pay off his debt. In no way he could have done that. But he forgave him the entire debt. His goal was not to receive the debt back, the debt back. His goal was to show him that there is forgiveness so that he may repent. But it didn't work. He saw another person who owed him money and he put him in prison. He owed him very small a very small amount compared to what he owed his master and that amount of money could be collected and paid off but he still put him in prison he was an ingrate he did not have gratitude for the forgiveness he received from his master so gratitude is a virtue that we all need to have not only in this case, but in many cases, in everything that we have in life, we must have gratitude. Otherwise, our faith is really useless if we don't have gratitude. We have to have gratitude in order to advance in our faith. So, we learned from this parable that not only we need to repent, but we need to forgive, but also we need to have gratitude as the master of that person did. And if we don't, what will happen to us is what the master did to that servant, unrepentant servant. What did he do? It says right here, and in anger, his Lord delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. And he will never pay all his debt. So he will stay in jail forever. The point, again, is not just repentance, forgiveness, and gratitude. 
all of these three things we need to have. If we sin against one person, we ask for forgiveness and we, have, we should have gratitude that he, he or she forgave us. You see, sin not only affects us and affects the person we sin against, it affects all of humanity. Look at the sin Adam and Eve committed. And because of their sin, we so suffered the consequences. We're not in paradise anymore. We're not guilty of their sin. We are not guilty of Adam and Eve's sin, but we suffer from its consequences. And that, and that part of it is not being in paradise. Sinning, death, all of these are consequences of Adam and Eve's sin. So we suffer from that. And whenever we sin against each other, it doesn't only affect us and that person. That person is affected and it affects others in indirect ways. So it is important to repent and not to do it again and to forgive if we need to forgive but we need to forgive in a wise way so that we don't help the other person commit more sins. Instead, to help him or her stop sinning. So there are many facets to forgiveness and to repentance and to gratitude. If you have any questions about this, uh, please, or anything else, please type them up as I give you an update on what is going on in the diocese in September. In Septem on September 12, there will be um, training of Sunday school directors and uh, teachers as the effort is led by Anna Sarah Farha. She's in, from Jacksonville, St. George Church in Jacksonville. She is the uh, Christian Education Coordinator. She's coordinating all of this effort to train the teachers and the directors on how to use um, uh, Zoom effectively uh, to conduct Sunday school. Of course, Anna Sarah has a lot of help. Uh, educated and uh, uh, degree-bearing uh, uh, parishioners who are going to do the training. Um, so this is on September 12. On September 15, I will be me meeting with all the Antiochian women presidents from all parishes in the diocese to set the plan uh, forward for the next year. On September 20, that was September 15. September 22nd, I will be meeting with all the Antiochian men presidents in the diocese. So September 12 is the Sunday school um, training. September 15 is the meeting with the Antiochian women presidents and the Antiochian women board. On September 22nd is the meeting with the Antiochian men presidents and the Antiochian men board and then we are working on meeting with the YAF presidents or leaders in all the parishes YAF is the young adult fellowship and we're working also on the teens meeting with all the presidents from all the parishes uh, we haven't set the dates for those two meetings uh, in addition we are working on finalizing the four retreat schedule. Uh, the uh, meeting on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, will finalize all the schedule. We'll finalize everything that we can uh, send to everyone. And hopefully by the end of August, we will send a uh, uh, document that includes uh, the schedule, includes the speakers, includes the topics, and uh, uh, includes a registration form for everybody to register. We will have kids club, we will have uh, tracks for uh, 
uh, the clergy, tracks for the laity. We will have psychologists speaking uh, on the topic of uh, dwelling in unity, uh, which is the topic of uh, uh, the uh, four retreat. Uh, Psalm 133. It is pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. That's the topic. And we will have subtopic by many, many speakers, priests and psychologists. Um, so hopefully you will spread the word and uh, have people uh, register and benefit from the full retreat. Okay, I see some questions have been logged. Sam and Yasmin, Your Grace, can the can you elaborate more on the relationship between forgiveness and enablement? For example, does being wise as serpents ever mean that we are to withhold forgiveness? Um, no, that's not what it means. What it means is we forgive in a wise way. We tell people that we forgive them, but we tell them basically in a loving way what they did to offend us. And we tell them we forgive them. But remember, we have to be kind, we have to be loving when we let them know. We have to be kind, we have to be loving. It's very important to do that. Otherwise, we would offend them. Even if they don't repent, we forgive. Why? Because lack of forgiveness is going to affect us negatively if we don't forgive. It will eat us up on the inside if we don't forgive however if the person we forgive does not repent the forgiveness does not even reach them they don't benefit from it so we never hold forgiveness but we have to be wise how we forgive does that make it clear Sam and Yasmin, does that make it clear? And family? So we never hold forgiveness. We forgive, but we have to do it in a wise way. In a wise way so that we don't enable the other person to keep sinning. If the person keeps sinning against us in the same way, and we keep forgiving them, and so... The way they think about it, it's okay if I sin against you because you're going to forgive me. But by setting the parameters in a loving and kind way, we tell them if you keep sinning against us, then what is the point? The point of repentance is to turn around, is an about face, and to stop sinning. That's the idea. Okay. Uh, Deborah. What if the offender is not able to understand that they have sinned? Such a person with dementia. Such as a person with dementia. Well, that's a different story. If a person... Uh, with dementia uh, sins against us this means they most likely don't understand that they sinned against us that's a totally different story of course we forgive them, we forgive them. but if they, it depends on their level of dementia they could be far advanced in dementia that they are unable to recognize that they sin but we forgive them we can sit down and talk with them about what they've done and if they can understand it, perfect. If they cannot, we cannot hold a grudge. 
Okay, there's one. Alfred, if I continue to sin against someone and, uh, and continue and they continue to forgive, I try to change by repenting, but the sin continues. What is the next step? Well, that's why there is this topic, this topic that I always talk about, spiritual father. Why do we have a spiritual father? The spiritual father is supposed to be someone who is farther on this on the narrow path to salvation, far, farther than us, wiser than us, to help us to stop that sin. See, if we sin once, it's a sin. If we sin twice, it's a sin. But if we sin repeatedly, it becomes a passion. It's no longer a simple sin. It becomes a passion. And when we get to that level, it's very difficult to curb it and to stop it. And for sure, we can't do that on our own. We need a spiritual father to help us do that. The next step, Alfred, is to talk with our spiritual father. Actually, it's not the next step. We shouldn't allow it to get to that level. We should have preemptive strike by having a spiritual father before we get to that level. But it's not too late to seek the help of a spiritual father even if we get to that level. The idea is every orthodox person must have, must, M-U-S-T, not should, must have a spiritual father in order to help him or her deal with these issues. And the word must does not mean the Orthodox police is going to come and beat you over the head if you don't have a spiritual father. The must means that you on your own, in your free will, go seek a spiritual father. Nobody's going to come around and beat you over the head, hey, you don't have a spiritual father. Nobody's going to do that. The must means we must seek a spiritual father. Okay, Anisia, what would, what would have happened to the other servant? Uh, which other servant? Um, the one that owed the hundred denarii? Anisia, An Anisia, is that is that what you're talking about? The servant who owed the hundred denarii. Can you please clarify? Okay, Mitzi from Tupelo. A wife can be accused of nagging if she asks a husband not to do what he wants to do, even if it is a hurtful to her. If, even if it is hurtful to her. I divorced last year and he went far away. He does forgive. He, how does, how does he, how does forgiveness work now? Well, um, let's talk about a little bit earlier than now. Uh, the husband and the wife must have spiritual fathers. Preferably one spiritual father for both of them. Um, so that issues can be resolved. If the husband or the wife does not stop sinning against the other person, then the spiritual father needs to get involved. Actually, he needs to get to get involved even before the sin becomes entrenched so that it is easier to take care of it. It's basically a journey with the spiritual father. It cannot happen just when you need him. 
He has to know you well to prescribe the right spiritual medication. It cannot be that you don't talk to your spiritual father for six months until you have a big problem. It's probably too late to do that. But you have to be in touch with your spiritual father on a constant basis, on a regular basis, so that he knows you, so that he prescribes the right medication, spiritual medication uh, for the sin. So to get back to Mitzi's uh, question, um, how does forgiveness work now? Well, you still have to forgive him. And right now, he cannot um, do the things against you anymore because you're already divorced, right? You have to forgive him, not just for him, but for you, so that the issue does not eat you alive on the inside. And it will if we don't forgive. You still have to forgive him. Okay, Anasia. So you're saying yes, you're talking about the person who uh, owed the 100 denarii. Well, the 100 denarii was possible to collect and pay back the other servant. So the idea is that he needs to do that and give it to the other servant, even though it's not going to help the, the first servant pay off his debt. But we have to do what is our duty, what is ours, no matter what. Even if the other person is the uh, offender, we have to do our part, no matter what. After the wicked servant was put in, pr in prison, what would happen, what would have happened to the servant who owed the hundred dinari? Yeah, already, I already answered that. He, um, he uh, uh, will be able to collect all of that. Um, hopefully, the uh, wicked servant would forgive him so he would get out of the prison to be able to collect this money and uh, give what, what, he's, what he's owed. It could be that someone outside of prison would give him this money so that he can pay off his debt and leave prison. It's the kindness of others that can help him. And that works in our life every single day. The kindness of others can help us, and our kindness, in return, can help them. Okay, Khuri Lara has unforgiveness equal drinking poison, absolutely, and expecting your enemy to die. Very good, that's wonderful. Unforgiveness is as if you drink poison and expecting your enemy to die. It doesn't work. It hurts us more than it hurts them. Wonderful statement. Exactly. It eats us alive on the inside. Even though we might be wronged. Okay? Even though we might be wrong and that has not been corrected, we need to forgive so that it doesn't affect us and doesn't affect our spiritual life. <laughs> okay, Julio Lara is not taking credit for that statement. <laughs> I give you credit for bringing it up. Any other question? Okay, I'll give you another minute. I'll go over the update. On September 12th, there will be training to Sunday school teachers and um Directors, all of that will be on the internet, on on band, and on um, uh, in the email. Uh, Anna Sarah will send the email to all the directors. Um, 
On September 15, I will meet with all the Antiochian women presidents from the entire diocese. On September 22nd, I will meet with the Antiochian men presidents. Uh, we're working on the F presidents and the teams. And the full retreat uh, will be advertised by the end of the month fully with the full schedule and uh, that includes the events, includes the speakers, includes the topics. So please be on the lookout and uh, register for the full retreat and participate in all the other events in September. God bless you and take care. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.